I'm gonna show you why this channel will help you discover more speed and less time with less risk using your own God-given movement patterns. Speaking of God, I'll be using the spiritual download method straight into your brain to make you a thousand, maybe even like a hundred and one thousand times better than you were last week at descending on your mountain bike. Using these same three levels which you have to go through, do not skip this video if you want the secrets to descending because if you stop at level two, you actually, you actually literally might crash. It's actually critical that you learn yeah, all yeah, three of these because they will give you the stability you need to descend with confidence. This channel is about getting 10,000 mountain bikers to shred with confidence. Right now there's 40 million mountain bikers in the USA and mountain biking is a whole lot harder than we are good at it. So let's get to work. And I'm breaking down this into three different levels because other channels may tell you what body positions to use and there's different theories out there. Now I'm the only channel that's going to tell you whatever theory you choose, the most important part is what muscles you use to get to that theory. So if other channels haven't worked for you, I'm gonna fix that today because I'm gonna show you how to activate the right muscles to get whatever theory you're using to work for you. Now let's, let's go, let's get started at level one. Level one descenders are locked up, they're immobile, whatever their bike does, their body follows with it, and it just, this feels terrible. This is you if you're maybe a beginner mountain biker or you're an intermediate mountain biker who's never been given the right basics, or you're an intermediate mountain biker who has a background in XC or road. Now, not only is your body locked up, but your brakes are probably locked up a bit too. If you're here, you suffer from arm pump. If you're here, you suffer from your legs being tired. If you're stuck here, you're probably just overall, you feel like a fear ball and you're, you're rolling down the trail feeling that fear. This is how to fix level one and get to level two as an intermediate mountain biker. You need to stop holding on and you need to start using the correct torso support so that you can separate forces from the bike coming in from the trail and you can have a stable torso. All right, the thing you need to do is you need to create what's called a foot wedge. A foot wedge is where we push the front wheel forward like this and we kind of pull back on the back pedal a little bit like this. And what it does is it creates a stable wide platform for us to stand on independent of wherever the cranks are floating. So in order to do this, just get on some flat ground, try to push the pedals away from each other, and you may have to drop your front heel to do this. I, I cannot stress how important this fix is. I've met more riders who've been riding for like 20 years, 30 years, and they've never even heard of this. It's kind of, it kind of actually makes me a little bit upset that there's so many coaches and teachers out there and so many YouTube channels that don't start with this basic fundamental. It's like, this is how you stand on your bike so that you, so that you get stability. Guys, if you haven't heard this before and you're not doing it, do the foot wedge, do it now. It's probably 80% of the foundation of the next two things that I'm gonna show you as well. Do the foot wedge, practice it on some non-rowdy descents, and just get a feel for what this does. How you know you're doing the foot wedge correctly, again, we're engaging just literally pushing the feet apart from each other. How you know you're doing this correctly is that you're able to ride down a hill and you don't need to use your hands. The reason why you don't need to use your hands is because you are balancing on your feet. The reason this is important is because when we balance with our feet, our feet are really strong. Our legs, they're really strong. Our arms, um, if you're Richie Rude, your arms are stronger than my legs, but everybody else, your arms are not as strong as your legs. So yeah, we want to use our big, strong muscles to support us. Can you guys see why this is so important and how this is different from some of the other stuff that's out there, like about your, your body position and your hip hinge. None of that matters if your weight is based on having to lean forward on the bike or having to balance using your arms. Now, once you have this basic, and again, this is really basic, I'm shocked at how little this is taught. Uh, once you have this really basic fundamental down, Go ahead and type below in the comments if this is something that helps you. If this is something that you try out, come back to this video and say, hey, this worked for me. I wanna see you guys blow the channel up because we need to get more riders to see this. It's really, really frustrating seeing our buddies go over the bars. Actually, I take that back. It's really kind of funny sometimes. Okay, it's really frustrating to see our friends go over the bars and get hurt. Um, and we don't want that to happen. So the best thing you can do is share with them this information that'll help them stay balanced on the bike. Thanks for sharing this. Type a comment below, share this with a friend right now. All right, now once you have level one 
mastered and once you're starting to use the foot wedge, it allows you to hold your torso up using your core. Now, if you wanna check out how to do this, check out the video I did earlier describing exactly how to do this and how important that is. Next, let's go to level two. Level two descenders are probably where about 80% of intermediate riders are stuck if they have good enough fundamentals and about 10 to 15 years of riding experience. You know that you're here because you can take one or two medium or large hits, but as soon as the trail gets it's really crazy. As soon as there's three, four, five, six, ten successive hits in a row, that's when everything falls apart and you become a level one stiff rider again. You, so, you still suffer from arm pump. It's still tough for you to get down really rocky, rooty descents. And if anything goes wrong, you're having to lock up and really compensate using, using your arms. This is why you suffer so much from arm pump and why it's so tough for you. And the real reason why this is so, it's so important to get this next fundamental I'm about to share with you is because this is where all the fun starts to happen. So here's the thing, if you wanna have if you want to have more fun on the bike and do it safely and eliminate quite a bit of fear, the truth is that fear comes from knowing that your body can't do that. You just know. I mean, think about it. The last time you were riding down a trail and you locked up, something in your, your deep instinct, you felt it in your spine, you felt it in your body. And it was just like, I can't do this, I'm gonna lock up. You didn't have any control over that. And so overcoming that fear is something that my dad used to say, which is confidence comes from competence. In other words, being actually good at something, having your body know that it can do something is the real source of confidence. Now, here's how to fix this. You need to stop bracing and start pumping, okay? Stop bracing and start pumping. And this is really, really, really simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Just make sure we've got the foot wedge or, or sometimes if you're going over really rocky, rooty terrain, your wedge might break down and your, your feet might float like this. That's okay. Just think about pushing into the front pedal and the foot wedge will, will be there for you, I promise. So on a moderate or a crazy, like rocky, fast descent, we wanna use the foot wedge build on that and support the torso with the core. Now on level two, what we wanna do is start pumping primarily with the arms, okay? Now pumping with the arms, what this does is it allows us to match the terrain using our front wheel. And this is something I learned from some riding friends back in college about 20 years ago, is that where the front wheel goes, the back wheel is likely to follow. And the back wheel will track really nicely if the front wheel is tracking smoothly. So here's what we want to avoid. We want to avoid the front wheel compressing and then the, the rider compressing into the front wheel. Now that means that the front wheel is going up while we're going forward. The next thing that's going to happen while we're forward is the back is going to come up and tilt us forward and then we're going to be really out of balance. Can you guys think about that? I mean, think back to the last time that you had successive hits, you felt like you had to keep from falling forward, right? And the reason why is because you are just locking up and you need to start pumping. When we pump, what we're doing is we're putting the front tire where we want the path of the bike to go relative to the body. Does this make sense so far? So this one's really, really simple. In order to overcome this, you just need to put the front wheel where you want the back wheel to go next. And if you do this, it'll actually take care of 90% of that stiffness that we're talking about. So get fired up because level three descending, this is where the fun is. This is where it's not just addicting, but this will actually make your soul come alive. And I'm not just exaggerating here. Like this is what draws us to mountain biking is we have that one moment or maybe you imagine yourself having that moment where you're flowing over the rockiest, rootiest, gnarliest terrains. Your friends are watching. You're like, oh my gosh, this is great. I did it. And you look back and you go, I don't even know how I did that. It was amazing. I wanna show you how to create that right now on level three descending. So let's check it out. So what, you, what we need to do is become level-headed riders. In other words, how you know you've reached level three is that you can go over any rocky, rooty terrain and your visor stays relatively still like this. Oh. Here's the secret that nobody talks about. 100% of being a level visor rider is your torso path. That's it. That's it. There's nothing else to it. 
the reason why the path of the torso is everything in descending. And the reason why is because what we're going to do is create the smoothest path possible down the trail in order to create this level-headed visor. Now, can you see how this is different from someone telling you a body position to be in? Body positions are reactive. That's why I don't prefer them as a teaching tool for intermediate riders trying to break through the plateau. Body positions are important. However, what we need to do is we need to create a pathway for the torso that's absolutely smooth. Now, why the torso instead of the hips or the shoulders or the eyes or something like that? It's very simple because the torso is the heaviest part of the entire system of the rider and the bike together. So the torso is where the main amount of mass of the body is and if we can keep the heaviest part of the mass the same, we can move everything else around that heavy mass much faster. Think about it, it's just physics. If you were to try to go down a trail like a Baja truck and stay as smooth as possible, you want the truck to stay still while the wheels move up and down really quickly. This is what creates a smooth ride for the driver in the car. This is exactly what we wanna to do to get to level three. Now the way to do this, I, I do admit that it's not something that you could maybe watch a video and immediately pick up on this. And part of the reason why is that so many riders think they're about to be at level three when they're really at level one. And uh, I hate saying it that way, but it's true. And the fact of the matter is that you really need to master level two and spend 90% of your time on level two. And what you're going to notice is that you start to feel this rhythm when you're pumping with the arms. And you're going to notice, oh, my torso felt like it was maybe didn't even move very much, or my torso was able to flow with the terrain. So you need to stop thinking about body position and start thinking about torso path. Just picture your torso flying through the trail and moving smoothly like a bird flying through the air. Now imagine just attaching the arms on the bike to that and put the arms on the bike where the trail is and then add the pumping from level two, whether vertically or even side to side, so that we can match our body and the distance we need to be from the trail and match it all together. So there's three subgroups to level three riding. I'm gonna break those down now. So the first thing we need to think about is a proper hip hinge. And a hip hinge is really simple. It's where we take the upper body and we bend at the hips <clears throat> to get the torso to go an angle lower. And what's really interesting about hip hinging is that the steeper the trail gets, the more that we want the hip hinge to help us bend the torso down and get really low. And sometimes if the trail gets really steep, we actually wanna go past the horizon and point the spine downhill. You can only do this with a really solid hip hinge. The second thing you need to do in order to reach level three is leg modulation. And this is where I see a lot of riders messing up, especially in their 40s and 50s, is they get the hip hinge right or they get the arm pump right, but then they just kind of lock the legs in place. And what this does is it means that all the forces on the rear of the bike especially get transferred up through the hips and into the torso and they make you bobble up and down. And it makes it very hard for you to be proactive on the trail. So the most important thing is being able to just think, okay, if I want my torso to fly through the trail like a bird, where do my legs need to go to proactively pump over and uh, over rocks and roots? And how can I match the distance proactively to make this smooth as possible? And the third and final sub technique for level three descending is going to be scapular and elbow modulation. So a lot of times people talk about having this perfect 90 degree angle. And again, watch the video I did earlier on body position versus the myths and the blueprint on that. So a lot of it is we need to be in this position is what's taught. Really what's more important is, are you able to have a strong torso where your scapula is retracted and able to protract and retract and bend while the trail comes up and down. If you're able to do this physiologically, then it allows you to move properly on the downhills, and it's really, really, really important to be able to do this movement-wise. So once you can combine these three things, the hip hinge, the leg height modulation, and also the scapular and elbow modulation, then you just become a, a pumping machine, and it allows you to be a complete system of suspension where your wheels and your suspension on the bike takes all the small bumps and your body takes a lot of the big bumps, but you feel smooth doing it. 
Now, once you get all these three mastered, then the only thing holding you back is actual fear, like the kind that you run into because you're, you're going legitimately fast for your own skill level. And that's a really good place to be because then it comes down to, hey, how do I, how do I really feel today? Am I feeling good? And if you're feeling good, just send it. So if you like this, if you find that it's a bit different from other trainings that you've heard, other channels, go ahead and smash the like button absolutely write a comment, let me know what you think, and share this video with a rider you think this will help. This is the most important thing. Again, our mission is to help 10,000 mountain bikers show to the confidence. Help us out on our mission. We'll make more great content if you do. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.